welcome everyone to online mentorship with Pastor Paul Adeni and our special guest today is Dr. Siri Asobo. But before I specially receive God's servant uh, and we get started properly, it's going to be one hour of maximum impact. I want you to please open up your heart. A man cannot receive anything if his heart is closed. So I want you to have an open heart to receive uh, from God through his anointed servant. You know, we began this thing last week, Thursday, and it, it's been, you know, an incredible experience. If you go back to our Facebook uh, page, The Evidence Church, Instagram, oh, Instagram is just 24 hours. You might not see it again on Instagram, but if you go back to YouTube, you will surely see it there. And, you know, each of the episodes has been very, very impactful. And today we surely not be different. It's going to be very, very, very amazing. There is a shift already ongoing. And I do believe that God will surely shift you forward. All right. So today we are so honored and highly privileged to have with us the special man of God. <laughs> you know, I, I, I will say to a lot of people, and I also put it out there that one of the, you know, most brilliant minds that the Lord has given me the privilege to come across, to know, to cherish, and to celebrate is the real gift of God that we are having at this time. And I'm sure that that's going to be amazing relationship with your mind. Yes, yeah, I'm going to be a mental relationship or allow me to be free. I'm going to be a mental intercourse with your mind today as something is going to shift for you positively. Uh, Dr. Siri Asobo is a partner consultant and a business advisory leader at Price Waterhouse PwC uh, uh, and you know he is successful in his professional career. Uh, he has an inspiring story. I am looking forward to have a brief of that story. We do not have, you know, uh, uh, the luxury of time for him to share everything, but I'm looking forward, and you will surely be looking forward to hear his story. And, you know, it's quite inspiring, and I am glad with what God is doing with him through his career. He is also a God-fearing man of God, very humble, full of integrity, and gracious steward in the kingdom of God, a servant leader. I am amazed about how the Lord has blessed him so much with the spirit of humility to have served in the commission for decades and for several seasons. And today, we are so excited that God has elevated him and is the lead pastor of Christ for All Mission Church, a great church that is doing extremely well and is a blessing to the body of Christ across the globe. So today is a powerful combination. A man who is successful in the work of the ministry and his work with God and also a man who is doing very well in his own profession. So he has a lot to pull out that will surely be a blessing to every one of us. But sir, before we get started, everybody that is that everybody that are on, there on Instagram, on Facebook, could you just put your hands together? Just let me know by tapping it on all of our comments page. And let's celebrate this precious gift of God. Go ahead and let's celebrate the man of God. Let's celebrate the gift of God. We honor you, sir. We celebrate you. I can't see you physically, but let me know by your comment. Just stay there. All right, we celebrate you, sir. I celebrate you, sir. Whichever is convenient for you. We love you, sir. We celebrate you, sir. Thank you, sir, for honoring us, you know, and giving us your time. I know you're a very busy person. Out of your tight schedules, you have given us this moment, and we do appreciate it. Welcome, sir. Dr. Siri? Glory to God for all. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Wow. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Just bear with us. That should be network. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. We are waiting for him. Amen. All right. I can see him. He's back. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. God, someone is back. Is right back. I'm not sure if it was me though. I thought I was still online. I guess. So really, you but just wear out the, the network. Yeah, I, I guess your your um. I think your Instagram is still buffering, but um, I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay, sir. So we celebrate you, sir. We love you, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. 
Amen. All right. I can hear you this a little bit low, but thank you, sir. You're welcome. Sir, before we get started, people are expectant. People are excited to have you with us today. But could you please, sir, help me to give a, a, a very, you know, special greetings, a shout out to my beloved wife. Today is her birthday. Uh, you know, I, I did the first, I did, the, I did the first ministry before I came out, and I'm so thankful for her, for her love, for her sacrifices. Today is a special day. I had to do my first ministry before rushing out to come and do this broadcast. Can you just help me to greet her specially, sir? Wow, I didn't know that. This is an awesome privilege. I quite, I, I actually should have known that because I, I would call. My friends would have wanted to give me a shout out as well. But happy birthday to you. You've been a very great, very great woman of virtue and I celebrate you today. Wonderful moment. It's an awesome time to, to remember. Um, and so I wish you very many more years to come of fulfillment and success in life, career, and ministry. But bless you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure she's watching and she's listening to you. And I'm sure she's excited about your greetings thank you so much sir all right sir now it's no longer new everybody's in the season of the global pandemic sir how has it been with you what has been your experience covid19 this is a reality we never prepared for it, it's a uh, it's a road you haven't crossed before mm -hmm. um in a lifetime you're not likely to witness this um yes. more than once um we probably have had history of um, what really transpired in this situation. Uh, but what has been different, I reckon, is that um, in spite of the global pandemic and the restriction is placed on people moving and uh, continuing with work, this current situation has been eased by technology. Hmm. I, I have been at home for eight weeks now. This is over almost two months since I've been at home. Wow. So even before the lockdown in Lagos at PwC, we took a decision to uh, close our offices and work from home. Wow. The, the, the truth is that we didn't anticipate this, but globally we had invested in technology and uh, we had started to ask people to start practicing flexible working and people were working from home. And so with the pandemic, it was not a difficult thing to leverage all our investments in technology, which has really enabled us to work from home. Yes, the lockdown is eased now, but people are not really in a hurry to go back. Of course, with the restrictions around physical distancing and um, the protocol you need to observe to be able to get back to work. So for me, it's been efficient working from home um, to the extent that technology enables that and also a bit more flexible and, uh, and gives opportunity for you to work with a lot more ease. Certainly, I miss people. I wow. miss um, seeing people. Certainly, I do. Um, just once, I think just last week, I drove out just about the time the lockdown was eased, just went to a mall and then came back. But, but since then, I've still stayed back. And the same thing with church, you know, um, it's not, it, we never experienced this before. Yes, we sir. never planned this, you know. But the good thing is that, yes, we understand people that died from this, people are taking ill, you know, um, there's a lot of pressure on government. But I think the good side, and I like to see the good side of everything, is yes, that sir. opening up opportunities as well. I mean, I was never so much of a fan of social media, but now I'm on board, you know. <laughs> and got into a situation where I can I can fully engage with the congregation and driving everybody to you know find their level and relevance you know to take advantage of the situation. Yes, having said that, I know it's not the same with every other person because some people have had to suffer job losses. People have had to um, grapple with um, feeding. You know, lockdown it meant that there were a lot of people who were we relied on daily living, you know, they would have problems. Of course, the impact was also been on, has also been on me because you have a lot more people to support through the process, you know, so they can survive it. So it's been here or there, challenging, yet it has its own opportunities that I've seen. Wow, thank you, sir. 
like, uh, 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 drawing my, my uh, inspiration from in respect to the gift of our mind, sir. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 23, verse 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I believe that the, one of the precious, if, if at the major gift that God has given to human being is the gift of our mind. And we are here today to examine that. I would like to ask you very quickly, sir, uh, 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 how, what will you say as COVID-19 in any way help to redirect our thought process? Because I believe that um, our mind is needed in all seasons. And this is a season that we never prepared for. Mm. So, sir, has COVID-19 in any way redirect our thought process? Absolutely, absolutely. From economic to um, daily life, even across the various sectors of the economy, our church, everyday life has been impacted, sorry, impacted uh, in terms of how we view things. Yes, sir. There is a new normal. Hmm. And the way we do things have changed. You know, wow. the way we do things change completely. Wow. And um, we are no longer in the time where you just wait. We are learning through the process. We are having to rethink our business models okay. as business people. We are having to rethink our delivery models, even in church. At home, you're learning to re rethink how you work at home, how you relate with your family. Yes, sir. You're now becoming more aware of hygiene. And there's a lot of information out there. And so you are also learning to determine what is the good information you want to absorb and mm -hmm. what you want to open your mind to and what you want to you know, take away. Yes, and so there is a lot of reshaping wow. of our minds from economic, you know, right to the presidency. We just finished a webinar where we yeah. are looking at, um, you know, from the, from the government, for the public sector perspective, we had governors, we had the house speaker who was present. You know, we have people in government who have taken a lot of initiatives. What is resonating here is that there is a bit of uncertainty. Yeah. We learn as we go across, as we go, as we go along. Yes, Even the speaker said they are thinking and rethinking deals that would aid, you know, some of the things they thought about. So when we started the year, we never emphasized that there would come a time where for seven weeks thereabout, there would be a lockdown in Lagos. Wow. If anybody told you you wouldn't go out and you would still survive, you would be bothered, you know, True. You'll be worried about that. But the truth is that people have survived. Hmm. Yes, there was riot. There was, you know, people were, you know, in uproar. But the truth is that they survived. Hmm. And so what makes people survive is the resilience wow. and the ability of you as a human being to rethink, to rediscover, to reinvent and then reposition yourself to your new normal. So you can actually face the this, this situation, you know, the way it comes to you. So mm. certainly our minds have been reshaped. We're more articulate. We're more receptive. We're more, um, how do I put it now? We're more diligent in even the information we receive. Mm. People are even more sensitive to what they forward. The, 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 the information they just you know before and everybody just receives something and forwards yes, and sir. you find that there'll be checks and counter checks on this information that have actually pervaded this, the social media and therefore people are even more conscious and more cautious up to the very very you know um, what you might call the literate um, in, in, in the um, uh, 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 in the church certain They've now learned to see that the only way to get along with church is to um, embrace technology. You know, not just youths, but also um, people who are women, who are readers, who might, you might call the peasants, are finding opportunity to use technology. Wow. So the level of education, the level of awareness has gone up. 
And so people are finding new ways of how to adapt and cope with the new. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, as you are talking, then it, 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 as we are talking, um, it, it became it becomes more clear, more clear, and it's clearer uh, for one to then submit that um, that shift uh, really happens in the mind because some people are still struggling, sir, to comprehend and to align with what is going on. <laughs> the reality is here, but the shift is here to happen in several minds. Mm -hmm. uh, before we go further. Uh, at this point, because my next question will build on this one, we would like to inspire us, sir, because I still find out that we, uh, the same reality we are having is still narrowed down to our individual experiences. Before this global pandemic, those who have been able to transition from their former state to a new state of admiration and success, of course, have to testify that something happened to them. They had a shift in their mind. Uh, there was a new way of thinking. There was a new... Uh, uh, they realized something new and they gave themselves to those things and it changed their life entirely. Uh, so we would like to just inspire us. How has been the story with you? What happened to you while you were young? How did you have several transitions that brought you to where you are right now? Then that will lead me to the next question, sir. We want to be inspired. <laughs> You're talking about, I mean, this is a million dollar question. You will oh not leave God. this. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I'm hearing I'm hearing echo, and I'm not sure how it's sounding here. I'm trying to turn down the volume of my other device, but again, but we'll see how it goes. But then again, um, we can go along with this. Yes, it, life has been um, a, a huge learning experience for me. You know, um, when it comes to um, how I evolve the time. And I've seen that there are stages that I have gone through um, to get to where I am. And there's, of course, a lot more um, to go through in life. I, I had a fairly um, humble beginning. Um, my father was um, um, a lecturer um, and the lead of um, the government, you know, ideas that came along with his work. Um, but when he died, we had to then even go lower in terms of uh, status in life because then we had to be chased away from where we were. I and mean, we had to start life all over again. And here was I, I was just 12. Hmm. Starting life had been a very, you know, from that moment had been a very difficult time for me. And going through school was about the most harrowing experience that I've had in life. But through it all, what made the difference for me was that earlier on in my life, I, 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 I gave my life to Christ. The Lord found me, and I began a new experience with him. So the father figure, the father experience that I, experience, I expected to have in my teen years was now replaced with a relationship with a God who I could not see. But then for me, it became so real that I had to hold it as tangible as strongly as I could. And that has been what has helped me through life. Wow. Finding that relationship with God has been the pivot of my life today. Everything about my life, my career, my home, my family has been as a result of the relationship I've had with God. Going through school was a difficult time for me, you know, um, but coming out of it meant that uh, I needed to trust God the more. I needed to rely on the privilege that I had being a child of God. And he, he took me through those difficult times. I mean, the times really where I, I finished school for a long time, I didn't have a work. Uh, I was just really a church person. Um, it wasn't clear to people what I would become. I, I read biology. Uh, I did my master's in botany. Um, I thought that, okay, I would go back and do my PhD. Well, that was what my lecturers wanted, but I realized there was something more for me. There was something more about life than just being at the end of school. So for me, it was rethinking and reinventing. And it took me that long to determine what I wanted mm -hmm. until I found the opportunity to um, work in a professional services uh, firm, PwC, you know, where I began to build a new career. What that meant for me was that I needed to rethink. You're moving from in sciences background to 
a new background finance entirely. It meant that I had to then unlearn, well, not necessarily unlearn, but then drop my mindset. There was a shift in mindset. Shift. Hmm. I, I hated accounting, you know, with a passion while I was in school. So what I didn't like, because it was so much pressure to me, I mean, I don't want to go into the technical usage of the terms in accounting. However, for me, a lot of things were just magic, moving here and there. I, I thought I had this pleasure, just seeing debit and credit and all that. But for me, I needed to reset. I needed to have a shift in the way I viewed things. So to embrace finance as a new way of career and, and to be able to ad adapt to professional development and ensure that I climbed the ladder was entirely difficult one for me. Wow. You know, and I got into a career where you're moving from level to level. So hmm. here I am. Long after finishing school, the people who were your juniors have now become your seniors in school. Sorry, at work. And you're looking, well, well uh, you have to swallow your pride. You have to humble yourself and learn because the whole thing about life is learning. Hmm. Learning how to do new things, you know. Yeah. You have to then respond to um, instructions. You have to then say, this is a new start for me. For me, it was a brand new start. And over the years, I have learned to grow in my career. I've learned to move from step to step and take on new challenges. One of the things that actually has helped me is how to take on challenges. Mm. I have so many parts about me. I, I believe, and this is one of my very strong scriptures, you know, that directs my life. I can do all things, Philippians 4.13, through Christ who strengthens me. So there is no limitation. To what I can do. There's no limitation to what I can become. There's no limitation to what I can achieve. Wow. And so when it comes to acts, I draw, I play music in physical instruments, I sing. I used to be a, a strong singer. I I, I I I do all of that, you know. I, I actually you know do portraits and do designs. And then here was I moving from core sciences to um, finance, you know, I moved on from finance understanding different dimensions of business and industries, you know, moving from financial services sector through the consumer industrial products and services, and then oil and gas. Today, I lead mining at PwC, wow. you know, and it's taken me through dimensions of life where, you know, there's no limits to what you can do. And, and at PwC, there's no end to learning. There's no end to development. Today, I have embraced it in a different ways of working. I now try to build websites. Wow. You know, I, I try to do stuff that are, that are not normal to me. Wow. Because every new day of your life is an opportunity to learn. So you need to understand what it is to unlearn, to relearn, to learn, and to relearn. Wow. And so that has been, for me, the story. You know, and then coming to the church aspect where I actually was just someone who was you know, God loving, just love the Lord, like to serve him, like to work in the household of faith, like to do God's will. And then I found things and I did. The Bible says, whatever your hands find to do, do with all your mind. I've always learned that really whatever thing you do, it may not be the permanent stage you'll be, it may, not just, it may just be a transition phase. It mm -hmm. may be something that is just for the temporary. Whatever you do, do with all your mind. So diligence becomes critical. Wow. Being intentional and being effective at what you do. And so being dogged and embracing excellence as a simple principle of life will make you go far. Wow. Somebody had once said to me when I was struggling to say, oh, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that. Just, why don't you just come out with at least the two one? That was what just changed me. So whatever you do, just be the best at it. Be the best. And so that brings you to a point where Every stage of your life, as you focus on it, you, you master it. You become a, 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 an authority in that area. And as you finish with that, you move on. So my life has been a stage. I dare say that there are a lot of things I need to learn. There are a lot of things I haven't even started learning. You know, there are a lot of relationships I have to you know, uh, build. There are a lot of encounters I have to have. A lot of things need to happen, but yet, you know, it's not over. Mm. Wow. 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 Can you, can you hear me, sir? 
<laughs> I can oh, hear ex you. Oh, excellent. Wow. In fact, I, I really don't want it to stop. I, I, I was just enjoying you. You want me to continue? <laughs> yes, that, that's how I feel I, I, actually. But 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 you that what you said, you know, so loaded, full of inspiration. And I was just writing down so many points from what you said. But the key word uh, uh, in the middle of all that you have said is flexibility. Um, sir, that will also lead me to another question. And I'm sure a lot of young people might find this very necessary and relevant. Um, there's a school of thought that undoubtedly we are in the IT world. IT is the order of the day right now. Thank God for technology. But there's a school of thought that a lot of young people are IT compliant, undoubtedly, but they are void of substance. Uh, could that be traced to their ineffectiveness to have self-discipline for personal development? And if that is right, how can they be helped? What would be your advice? Uh, because a lot of things you have rightly said, uh, you, you gave yourself to diligence, you are so flexible, you keep learning and unlearning and relearning, and you are studious, you are picking up new things to do and to learn. And all of these stuff have contributed to how far the Lord has helped you. But a lot of people, young folks actually, are on interleg. And uh, most times, you look for substance and you can't find it. Perhaps they are not doing much of personal development that requires certain discipline. What would be your advice, sir? Um, first of all, I know you started off with um, the IT or digital uh, uh -huh. um, uh, knowledge, digital skills are quite um, um, important uh, in this age. Uh, for years back, PwC had um, proposed that and actually come up with um, five mega trends, things that were shaping the world. And one of these was um, technology. And technology was causing a huge disruption mm. in how businesses are run, how businesses and industries are shaped. So technology had been a major disruptor. And for many people, they thought that was in many years to come. And it sounded Greek. You know, even until the beginning of this year, people didn't understand what, what we say workforce of the future is. Mm -hmm. When people talk about the digital workforce, you know, people still thought that it was something strange. Mm. But today, it's our reality. It is. What you will find out now is that it's no longer something that is in the future. If you, if you could not embrace and use technology all through the period of lockdown, even until now, you would be found completely useless. Mm. Some businesses could not operate. Mm. Some churches could not hold. And to the extent that you can't even have small groups other than family units that live together, it was difficult to gather. And so what you find out right now that this situation has provoked a new way of doing things and everyone needs to open his mind and learn. Mm. Now, for the, for, the, for the digital workforce or digital skills or digital way of working to be embraced, you need to consider a number of factors. Information is good. You get information, you're able to use information. But three things are critical. One is skills, your skills. Two would be your mindset. Yeah. Three would be your behavior, mm. the things you do. And four would be the relationships you have. Wow. And so when you have information like you're listening to this um, um broadcast podcast or webinar and you listen to a lot of them it's good it challenges you you have information but you then need to transit from information to building skills absolutely absolutely so you then need to say how do i develop new skills hmm. what skills do i require to be relevant in this present situation hmm. and there is no new skill you want to you want to build or no career you want to build that does not embrace the digital aspect of it None. so you need to then make up your mind that let's even understand these it things there's no there's no rock it's not rocket science 
yes. my, my niece had to come in here to, to help me with, our, with all of this. I have not started like, embracing social media. I'm building, I'm trying to build websites now. I'm yeah. trying to build stuff now because I think I need those skills. What do you then need to do? Go online. You're available, you know, training online where you can build skills. You can actually register for courses and get trained on it. And you require that. The, the employer of today is not so particular about your certificate. Hmm. It needs to know what skills you have. If I put something on the table, can you address it? So when you're thinking skills, think solution. Hmm. What solution do I provide in this present circumstance? Hmm. During the lockdown, people couldn't go out, but people who, had, who were providing food and essential services were allowed to move around. That's true. The young man who had been looking for work, you know, said to me, well, I now do supply. So he does deliveries. So I would draw a list. He would go to the market and buy stuff, you know, and then deliver to the house and take a percentage of it. So where others were busy at home or were at home lamenting, he was busy taking advantage of the small opening for food deliveries to actually do something. Now, he couldn't just have been able to do that effectively and build a clientele if he did not have, say, a web page or use of digital you know, applications that can make him known. Today, I open my web and I see there are some people who do deliveries. I call them on my phone and they are able to go purchase stuff and then come deliver at my doorstep. Mm. I haven't gone out. But if I need something today, all I need to do is to Google. Yeah. And I find a lot of service providers who have mastered the art of putting themselves in the digital space, in the digital world, and they can unless the skills to deliver their products and services. So you need to sharpen your skills. You need to, you need to find relevant. How can I make myself relevant in my environment? So skills are important. The other thing important is the mindset. I think this is about the biggest thing here. There has to be a shift, a, a dramatic shift in the way we think. Yes. Some people have fixated, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be what without end. The way it was yesterday is the way it is today, is the way it is forever. The world has moved on, mm. and the world cannot wait for anyone. Mm. So there is a shift to learn in a mindset, shifting your mindset to learn what skills do I need? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is unachievable. Nothing is that unattainable. In fact, hmm. I will shock you. This is a little survey my wife and I were doing. Yes, sir. Very recently, we embraced online services and online stuff. And we did a survey. Who are the people who attend these things most? You know what? It is mostly of adults than you just. Wow. Interestingly. Wow. So, and I see some older people, people who you would think can never be taken. Wow. They are now using Zoom to conduct prayers and all that. And I'm wondering, eh, this man, how did you get about this? Wow. Older people are embracing that shit. A young person who, and I think something with our youth today is that we think that we're entitled to so many things, but we have not moved the needle to even help ourselves. Absolutely. So we think somebody should right. do things for them. Government should do so. It is our time. Our time. Mentality, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. You, 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 you do not, you are not entitled to anything. The yeah. people feel that oh, when I think it's okay, uh, can I send you CVs? I have a lot of CVs that I look at them. Yes, you have a degree, you have even a two, you have a two one, but when we put you on the table and interview you, so even test your skills. There's nothing, and people have not, some people have not even taken the time to improve themselves. Jesus. You can improve yourself. So you can take on the how to's, you know, uh, 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 um, lessons online if, you, if you're able to. You can attend. How can I do this? One of the other things people have not embraced is apprenticeship. Mm. Building skills is not just about, yes, I've gathered all the certificates and I'm done. But where have you? found where you can learn. Hmm. Yes, you are a mechanical engineering graduate. So what? How much of the, uh, uh, um, the engine bolts can you change? How much of the tools of the engine do you know? 
nothing stops me to go and sit with that mechanic out there who is skillful at his work and learn. Learn. Nothing stops you to, to go with and attach yourself with somebody who is excelling in practice and learn. So, sir, are you saying, sir, that the digital space has not deleted apprenticeship? The what? Are you saying that the digital world, the digital space we have come into, has not in any way deleted uh, apprenticeship? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I am an apprentice with my niece. <laughs> Even in the digital space. Because that is a difficult topic to teach now, sir. She's teaching me how to do Instagram and doing stuff. So I'm learning. Yeah. Find mm. someone who has been successful in the career or the area you think it's the same thing you're doing and follow that person. Thank you. The reason you follow people on Instagram is not so you can, they can spread jokes so you can laugh. The reason you follow people on Twitter is not so that they can, you can hear the latest news and forward them. The reason you follow is you want to learn from them. So following, even in the digital space, is to learn. Is to learn. Not because that person is good at dishing out the best deal, unless you want to become a comedian. So there is a place for learning, for the place for apprenticeship. Mentoring is good. However, you need to understudy. So that's in your mindset. The other one is relationships. How many people do you know? In fact, you need to be able to draw on that capital called relationships. Wow. How many people can you link up with? And it's not about you taking up advantage of your, of your network, really. It's just about just building genuine relationships, genuine interesting people. Genuine. Because ultimately, it's about who you know. Wow. Not just what you know. It's not just about... What, it's what not just know? what you know, it's also who you know. Who you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh you know, my goodness. When it comes to business development, you know, in my, in my place of work, it, it, you, you know, a lot of us are techie. We know a lot of things. We have skills. But if you don't know people, you don't have a business. It's, you don't have a business, you don't know people. <laughs> wow. wow. You have to build a network. Even in the wow. digital space, you have to build followership. Wow. You, so, have, you, have a LinkedIn, you have a LinkedIn profile. What do you do with it? Wow. There are some people who have gotten jobs without applying because wow. they just create a LinkedIn profile and they are there. And because of their networks, people just find their CVs and find their resumes and call them to work. Wow. So you have your said, network, your, yeah. your yeah. network your relationships matter. Yes, sir. Yes, how sir. do you leverage or how do you build that force before you even wow. talk about leverage? I'm already getting afraid, sir, that we have enough time to dissect what we are dealing with. But I'm enjoying myself. I'm getting so blessed. Uh, I, I, but from your conversation, what you are saying right now, sir, I, I, I want to ask if you can just answer in about 60 seconds to 90 seconds, if that would be fine. So what would then be your strict, very strict advice? for business startups, for young folks, for people out there who are already being overwhelmed with what I would refer to as immediate gratification. They want to start a business today and become downvoted tomorrow. Uh, they want to start a ministry. That's my consistency, actually. And they want to uh, become Bishop David Doyedeko tomorrow or Pastor He Adeboye tomorrow. And, uh, and um, everybody's having what I call a, a celebrity uh, uh, consciousness. Uh, so what would be your strict advice? Delay gratification. Delay it. People come to me and say, I want to be like you. Mm. You see me ride a um, good car, I live in a good house, and they want to be like me. They don't know how long it took. How long it took. For me to get to where I am. Wow. Even when you start up business, you shouldn't expect in any way to make returns. There is a time for investment. There's a time to, for start off. No shareholder in any business expects immediate returns. Thank you. In fact, any shareholder who wants to draw out, who wants to cash out immediately is, is still in the business. Mm -hmm. A good shareholder will tell you, plow back mm. until you have sufficient to su sustain you. So you, you, there should be self-sustainability in every venture you start. Wow, thank so you. So don't be overwhelmed. Don't be overwhelmed. Delay. Don't be overwhelmed. Delay. Take your time. 
Take your time. You are not in competition. Yes, sir. The guy out there who is lavishing and looking, you don't know his story. Mm. Nobody can tell your story better than you. Oh, buddy. Be a master of your own story. Hallelujah. When you are a master of your own story, at the end of the day, people will want to learn from you because success will, can never be hidden. Exactly. Success takes time to build. And you need time to time build. To build. Thank you, sir. If I'm going to recap each of your wise quotes, I'm sure that it will take me, <laughs> you know, but I, I, at this point, I, I, I can, you know, freely and boldly say to people, you need to watch this broadcast again and again. You have to go back to the YouTube, go back to Facebook and all our available platforms and just work for so much wisdom, you know, uh, it's been said, a lot is being said, and I'm so glad. Thank you, sir, once again, but very quickly because we have about 10 minutes left and I'm just in faith that we'll be able to deal with a few questions I have left before you have the opportunity to pray with us and everyone right here. There is a mental shift already. Sir, there is no doubt about it that before this global pandemic, people are, are been, a lot of people have been suffering. And there, there has always been a major complaint about high rate of unemployment all over the world, though it's much more in Africa. The global pandemic has also come to add to that pain. In fact, many companies and so many people are losing their job. For those who have lost their jobs, sir, in two minutes, what will you say? What will be your advice for them? It's not over until it's over. Amen. The loss of job is only temporal. Mm. In fact, the Bible says all things work together for good. Yes, sir. There are times things happen to me. And I have cause to say, thank God it happened. Mm. I've been in situations in my life and I look back and I said, for those periods, I didn't have a job and I was seriously looking for one. Mm. I look back and I said, well, thank God I didn't get that finance house job. Those were days of form, you know, the days of finance houses and all that, where I was earnestly looking for a job in finance houses. There were no banks I didn't apply to. Mm. And I wasn't taken until I got to a point where I can actually develop a new career in my life. So sometimes when you lose your job, it's for, it's for, it, be, it is, might be a blessing. Mm. All things work together for good. Rather, ask, rather than ask why this, you could ask what for? What for? Is all of this for? What is the next phase? Move from why this to why exactly? Hmm. Move from why to what for? What is the reason for this? Wow. It's not just about why, because that the second, the second mindset or the second thinking makes you ask, what is this for? There must be something in this. Why makes you give up? I said, wow. Thank you. But what for makes you want to act? There must be a reason for this. Wow. And so I want to tell you that when life throws lemons <laughs> at you, Don't make it. lemonade out make of lemonade. it. Make lemonade. And somebody said, <laughs> and make sweet. <laughs> somebody said, I will not just make a lemonade out of it. I will send lemonade. I will send. I will sell it out. <laughs> I will. Make and sell. Thank you very much. So it's not over with you. Thank you, sir, for that. Now, I'm going to ask two questions in one, and I'm sure that you'll be able to help us. Um, I, I have, obviously, I have the privilege of, you know, of uh, assets with you, and I know that with the nature of what to do and uh, how strategic your profession is, I know you'll be able to help us out. So practically, for those who have loved their job, your response, it's quite encouraging. That was very encouraging. Uh, and that uh, invited hope. But practically, what will you suggest for those who are looking for job? Instead of looking for jobs, should they be thinking of creating something uh, that they can start doing and make money so they can create a job? In that sense, what would you like to say? And extensively, sir, how do we, position ourselves for economic policies because i know that government of nations right now are changing adjusting and you can't just uh, so for this next vaccine 
or somebody who just got something started, what will you say practically? And secondly, how do you position yourself for the dynamics that is happening in regards to economic policies? Okay, good. Um, I've tried to take a look at government policies, even before now, um, before the COVID situation, we were still struggling to come out of the 2014 recession. Yes, sir. You know, government had started to look at diversification, creating employment, and looking at sectors, you know, that would provide alternative revenues and then bring employment to the um, teeming citizens of the country. And then came COVID. I've seen or heard government come up with intervention policies where they have provided, even for those who have this uh, money market, and sorry, this uh, uh, um, uh, like this that government has given to market people, you know, traders and all that, trader money and all that. Government has given moratorium. Government is making efforts, you know, from what I hear and what I've seen to provide interventions as well, loans to SMEs and, and household, you know, uh, individuals and all that. Economic policies are there. We already know that it is on a downward trend. You know, things aren't looking good. Exchange rates is, you know, as, as come crazy, Naira is falling, reduction of interest rates and therefore affecting Naira fuel uh, price, there's a twin shock in the oil and gas, uh, in, the, in the crude oil and gas, global oil industry, demand falling, price is also falling. It has its own attendance, impact on different sectors of the economy. So when you think of it, the macroeconomic indices are not good. Hmm. That's the reality. We are actually in going towards a depression if we're not already there. Wow. Okay. So there is not, it's not just recession. It's even worse than that if, if we're not already there. We only just trust God to help government to come out. And so if you are strongly relying on government macroeconomic policies to be able to lift yourself out of your current situation, you might be waiting endlessly. Wow. Wow. So you need to think of how do I empower myself? Mm. How do I build entrepreneurship skills? And that is akin to the other question that you asked. Yes, sir. About loss of jobs as well. Government is doing everything to create jobs. In fact, there are um, 770,000 jobs that government has proffered or has actually proposed, which would be 1,000 jobs by local government for all the 770 local governments across the Federation. So they're proposing jobs for youth. But if you're waiting for that, it may not come down to you. So there have been interventions and relief. They provided, you know, food for homes, but it didn't get to everybody. It didn't. Yes, sir. You cannot continue to sit and wait for that. What you need to do is start from where you are. What do you have? Mm. What skills do you have? Mm. What work do you have? Mm. How can I make the most of it? Who is excelling in what this thing I have? This is it's the same thing I've said earlier. How can I attach myself to them? How can I learn from them? Yeah. How can I join myself with somebody who is excelling in my work area? And beg, you know, take your food, take everything, don't pay me yet, but I want to work with you. We've come to points where people don't even need to ask to, to even be paid for now. Mm. Because it's time to invest. The time to invest is not the time to expect gratification. And so take out that time and say, okay, I will, I will endure, but I will learn this thing. Wow. Give yourself time. At the end of this year, I want to be this. Set targets for yourself. Have a vision for yourself. And pray about it. And can I tell you something? The relations and connections you build, it's not about begging me, can you come and invest in my business? No, that's not the way to go about it. Money will always chase a good investment. Money will always chase a good investment. Wow. Once I see something you're doing, and I know this, this guy has a goal, he has a future. Any investor will always face. Can I tell you, even in times of recession, that is where the, the bullish investors come out. Wow. They are looking for cheap assets. They are looking for things they can buy cheaply because everybody makes money. Yes, they are sir. looking for opportunities here and there. Can I tell you, as bad as it is, yes, there is investor apathy, but generally there are some bullish investors looking for things to invest in. Looking. Mm. 
And so I believe that in this situation, you can find something. If you don't, ask around. It must resonate with the current things you have. It may not be something too far. Start small. And it will grow. Mm, wow. Wow. Useful advice. Thank you so much and so much. I need to ask this before we go. Understanding that the economy tends to be in a recession, but like you rightly said, if not in depression. What is your advice on finance management, regardless of the current level you might be in your finances? Okay, thanks. So it may seem that I'm talking from both sides of the mouth. Typically, <laughs> uh, wearing, my, wearing my finance hat now, and not just the, the pastor. <laughs> We are going to wrap it up with the pastoral thing. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think a lot of people are, and this is what corporate organizations are actually adopting. If you're not making money, you contain cost. Contain cost. It's not about cost. Amen. Wow. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I'm sure we are going to get him back. We are. Wow. Yeah. We are towards the tail end, but definitely we are going to have him back. We will surely have him back. We will surely have him back. Praise God. Okay. We will surely have him back. Beautiful. Beautiful. Why waiting for him to rejoin? Wow. You got to be an investor in skills, be an investor in developing your mindset positively. Be very positive about your mindset, be flexible, be dynamic. Open up to learning, on learning, and learning, and learning is key. Uh, you must be able to invest in your behavior. Very key. Your disposition is also vital uh, in your being to make so much out of life. Then, of course, your relationship is very key. Your relationship is very key. It is not what you know. <laughs> it is who you know. This is key in... Uh, Amen. In, really, in doing so well in your business and in your career. We'll also wrap up the meeting, but I'm just waiting for God's servant to come back and complete his thoughts. And we pray. And I'm sure somebody is already left already. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Wow. Ah, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The dynamic take on the Take on challenges, don't run away from it. You can do all things. You can do all things. God's servant is going to join us. Amen. God's servant is going to join us. God's servant is going to join us. I just want us to complete this. And uh, amen. Yes. Yes. Okay. We are. Okay. We are trying to see how to connect back to God's servant so we can.